the Studio Cuts Podcast with Taylor with WRRV. This is the Studio Cuts Podcast. Hey, it's Taylor from 92.7-96.9 WRRV. And the Studio Cuts Podcast is where we interview artists that were featured on Sunday Studio Cuts, our new music show on WRRV. Today, we're hanging out with Hippo Campus, who just released their new single, Bad Dream Baby. Where are you at right now? I am at our studio, Hippo Campus Studio in um, Northeast Minneapolis. What is it like over there in terms of weather and even COVID restrictions? I know they're being lifted in a lot of places. Yeah, uh, right now it is about 72 and sunny. Um, pretty average for Minnesota <laughs> summer. Um, and the restrictions are, I mean, like all these businesses have signs on their doors like, you got to wear a mask if you don't have the vaccine, or like it's recommended. No one is doing that. Um, (laughs) I think the last statistic I saw for the Minnesota vaccination rate was like just over 50 percent, maybe. Um, So obviously, you know, everyone in like a restaurant or in a store not wearing a mask probably isn't fully vaccinated, but most people have seemed to uh, thrown that caution away. Oh, wow. Yeah. How about there? Um, it's kind of similar to that. New York, I think, is at 70% of adults fully vaccinated. So they wow. lifted all restrictions like a couple weeks ago. And now it's just a free for all everywhere. Besides a certain some businesses saying you have to wear a mask, but otherwise it's pretty open yeah. wild. Yeah, same here. Hippocampus is a five person band. How did the pandemic impact how you created music? Great question. Um, so just before the pandemic, or just as the pandemic started, we were working on a record um, in a studio. Uh, and we were going in Monday through Friday, and then March 13th happened, and we were like, maybe we should just like take the weekend off. We'll come back <laughs> like next Wednesday or something. Like Let's do a long weekend. And then uh, a year and a half later, still really never came back to that. But um, we all know our way around a computer uh, in terms of like music production so we were like in the middle of that record process and then just had to sort of pick up the torch just in five separate rooms um, so we did a lot of like solo writing a lot of solo production just sending ideas back and forth to each other because we couldn't have that you know genuine collaboration that you usually find in the studio so it was just a really patient, like, hey, why don't you add something to this? Send it back to me. And then um, uh, that's kind of where we ended up. We found another studio spot, and then COVID sort of, you know, people understood you could get in your own little circle and not be too worried about it. So then we sort of picked it up later on, but, you know, a lot of things have changed in the meantime. Yeah, absolutely. Earlier this year, you guys performed in a live stream concert for Michigan State students. What was it like performing virtually? Um, so that's where this little studio came in super handy. Um, we have a little live room and all these mics. Uh, so we could like uh, sort of capture our sound relatively easily um, and send it out to our little computer thing and um yeah, I mean, I, we did you know, that Michigan show and a couple other college shows, and those seemed to go really well. The the promoter and the school seemed to like what we were doing. It was just a weird vibe. I mean, virtual shows took us a long time to feel comfortable with because, like, you're just you're like playing to no one and <laughs> someone. It's like you're practicing, but someone's watching you. And uh, I don't know. My my stick became. Like, to, to ease the tension for everyone, I was just, like, memorizing facts about schools and then <laughs> saying that, like, no one could respond. It wasn't, like, a two-way conversation like it is at a show, so we were just trying to make each other laugh, essentially, so it was awkward. One of your first big hits was Buttercup. What is this song about? Uh, Buttercup? Um, it's essentially just about, um, like... The language that uh, we wanted to use with each other and like you know our friends in terms of just like cutting to the chase so that was during our first record we had spent a lot of time writing 
a lot of those songs, and then Buttercup came around at the end of the process. And I think during that whole experience, we ran into um, just language barriers between us, you know. Uh, we wanted to like be honest with each other, but we wanted to keep the peace as well. And I think that song came around in a way um, manifesting that desire of like honest communication um, and sort of just like self-sufficiency as well. That song came out in 2017. How has the band grown since then? 2017 was a long time ago. <laughs> that was our first record. Um, I mean, yeah, we released that in February 2017, and that was like our first like big headlining tour. We were like, wow, we're playing to like five hundred people in like this club. That's awesome. And then we're lucky enough to like have those scale, you know, those shows scale up. And then you know, to so like 750 people, a thousand people, fifteen hundred people, and so. The, the gratitude has deepened, for sure. Um, our experience with our fans has been super awesome, so we just like want to keep playing shows. That was like the hardest part about 2020, was just sort of being locked in a room. Um, but the biggest change has definitely been uh, just learning like production, you know? We used to write songs all together in a room, now we sort of like start the ideas more individually. Um, and share them with each other and a lot of us are doing like solo stuff now so that doesn't take priority over hippo it's just another avenue where we can sort of express what we've been doing um, over the past couple years so yeah production i guess (laughs) you guys just released a new single called bad dream baby what is the story behind this song um so that was a song that came about uh, probably like four months ago um, we started working on this EP around then and uh, Jake came in and he's like hey guys this is a song. It's, a real, it's a real weird one and he played <laughs> it for us and these lyrics are super stream of consciousness like you know talking about Britney Spears and Valentine's Day and um, his dog that just died at the time which was sad so um, that sort of hit us as like oh that's totally what this like EP is you know a more direct sort of like clear language that doesn't have like the the lavish like thrill of some of our other lyrics like it's just sort of right there easily accessible but um you know holds the message that like the directness has its own profound impact on us you know what was the inspiration behind the music video for the single just to be direct, you know? Like, for a long time, we uh, we hated, like, oh, this is just another band playing their instruments in a music video. Um, so we really tried to avoid doing that with all of our other stuff. Um, but then with this one, with the EP, like, the whole ethos of it is just, like, hard truth. Um, almost, like, shocking uh, upfrontness. So... The, the vibe for the music video was just that, you know? It's like, what is it? We're just playing a song and sort of going through the different emotions um, that we've all been going through for the past year, just like boredom, like sort of pent-up energy. Um, yeah, just exploring the mundane space with a lot of different emotions. It's been said that your new EP is some of the most vulnerable songwriting to date. What is meant by that? Um, yeah, like I've been saying, it's, um, it's, it's sort of circumventing uh, the, the lyrical prose that we've sort of been doing in the past. It's, it's less um, poetic and more honest, uh, more surface level type stuff which um in our opinion you know, has its own level of like meaning especially after the past year so um yeah it's direct up front but it's still just you know an honest expression of the emotion that that comes with besides honesty and vulnerability what else can we expect from the upcoming ep um 
definitely a bit of satire in there. Um, hopefully some some shocking moments where uh, just to sort of question, um, you know, where music's at right now, what we're doing with it. And hopefully just, uh, yeah, just a good time. You know, there's some <laughs> funny moments, there's some serious moments. It'll, it'll be a whole bag of worms. Are there any plans to tour this year? Are you part of any festival lineups? Not a huge touring year for us. Um, we're doing Moon River in Chattanooga this September. Um, some other little things around then, but touring seems to be a um, future plan for next year. All right, my last question for you. If someone were to come to your city, what is the one thing they have to do? They have to answer the question, uh, which dive bar is better? Um, and the two dive bars in question are the CC Club in Uptown and Grumpy's in Northeast. It's sort of, um, you know, there's two types of people in the world. You have, you're a Grumpy's man or you're a CC girl, you know? <laughs> it's, uh, and I think everyone should have that experience and answer that question, honestly. What would your answer to the question be? Oh, yeah, I don't know if we have time. Um, <laughs> CC, you can't, you can't have one without the other. I'm a, I'm a CC guy right now, but Grumpy definitely has its appeal. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and the Studio Cuts podcast. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Make sure to check out Bad Dream Baby by Hippocampus and watch for their new EP, Good Dog, Bad Dream, when it drops on August 6th. And don't forget to catch Sunday Studio Cuts, a new music show featuring all of the up-and-coming alternative music hosted by me every Sunday at 10 p.m. on 92.7-96.9 WRRV. Join us next week as we interview another up-and-coming alternative artist on the Studio Cuts podcast.